Hey everybody, it's here. So we finally got our issue 424, April 2023. And uh, this is the uh, Wargames Illustrated. It comes with the uh, English Civil Wars brew. Uh, and I'm quite looking forward to like, painting this. So this is what I'll probably be doing. Um, in the first part, we will probably see the sprue up close. So I'll give you a, you know, a, a close up of the sprue, and then uh, I'll I'll well, I'll give you a step by step perhaps of painting it or how I got around to painting it. Maybe for just one base, I'll just show you how I went around doing it, went about doing it, and then uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll compare uh, this sprue with another one of Warlord Games' products, which is basically the the. Uh, the uh, 28 mm English Civil War uh, regiment. So I'll, I'll put them side by side so you're able to see the comparisons and see how, how that works. Um, and finally, um, I'll give you, you know, a very, very quick, like, you know, a carousel look at the paint job. So that's that's the plan. That's the plan for this, this issue. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. Also, very quickly, I want to talk about... Um, the uh, cover mount focus now this is great this is fantastic this is how they do referencing so you actually have all the referencing for all the paints in the magazine itself so when you buy the magazine you get your free you get your free sprue and you have uh some idea of the colors that they'll, they'll be using and in this in this uh, example they're using uh prince rupert's uh, blue coats so they show you how to do it and and they also show you how to do to repair banners and to repair because I'm telling you in this with uh with this with this spruce, you know, these tend to break. Yeah, these tend to break. Um and it's nice that you actually have the banner repair as as one of the small little insert articles there. And here you have the uh the figures and the colours that they use, which is great. This is good because it helps new players um i think magazines like magazines should do this more often concentrate on the new players i mean the veteran players will probably have you know tons and tons of magazines that they can refer to or take reference from but the newbie doesn't have much so this is great this is a great plus in fact um of all the uh the uh, sample paint jobs or the the tips and and uh, uh hints tips and tips that uh, were given this one looks like the best best issue of all as you can see over here and uh, they even have a smaller pick your primer wisely and how to use a primer very nice it covers all the figures that you will get that you get in the, in the magazine so definitely a plus well done Right, so let's have a look at the sprue. As you can see over here, we've got, let's see, you know, one, two. This will probably be a, one, one, a base uh, of pikes. And then we have the muskets. So you've got one base there, one base there. And then we have uh, the command, the command sprue. This will probably match up with, I want to say, the front guys. So it's one, two, three, four. So you pretty much, I think that's what you're going to get. I hope that's what I'm going to get. So what's going to happen is, um, yeah, let's, actually, before that, let's have a look at the uh, detail on these things. Detail's really good, I must say. The sculpts are getting better and better and better. I think it's just time, you know. Uh, if, I, if you compare this to the uh, American Civil War, ACW, you can, you can see there's a, there's a huge difference. Uh, the quality is the quality is definitely better. Uh, you can see there. It looks, it looks really good. Let me see. I can see the, the front side. Yeah. There you go. Let's orient it properly. Uh, yeah, it looks good. It looks good. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm actually gonna use this as my reference. Um, these are the 28 mm um, warlord games english civil war figures so i'm gonna do the regiment the same way so these are probably be the colors i use uh i pretty much used a spray of a pure red uh a black wash and um let me see i think i think it was uh 
um, skeleton bone, I think, if I'm not mistaken, and some brown. So this would be my this would be my reference to go for. Just kidding. There you go. Right. Okay. So pure red spray. I'm following exactly the same thing I did for the uh, twenty eight millimeter. So I sprayed that one, pure red as well. So let's see whether um, you know doing the same thing for both uh, sizes will make this almost the same result. So this is what came off the painting table once I was done with painting. Now I decided on painting the King's own lifeguard of foot regiment because you know I hate painting irregular troops. So I researched and found that this regiment was the least irregular. Uh, keeping with the overall color of red would make the completion of this regiment so much quicker and easier. I used the Army Painter Pure Red Spray to give a base coat for the figure. I knew the figure was going to be predominantly red. So this was an easy and quick choice. I used Army Painter's Oak Brown for the weapons and some headgear. But for the headgear as well, I used Vallejo's Brown for a variety in color. The uh, metal parts were Army Painter's Gun Metal for that dark metal look. And the skin was Army Painter's Barbarian Flesh. It was very tempting to not give uh, the regiment a quick shade. A uh, quick shade wash, but I was I want, I, but I wanted a darker look for this regiment. I washed some parts of the model with quick shade flesh wash, and the other parts with uh, quick shade dark tone. I love dark tone. The dramatic effect that dark tone gives the figures uh, is a tone I really like. Overall, I must admit the tone does give the army a very dark feel about it. The uh, musket sprue on the frame comes in two different poses. Uh, this one is in the ready pose and the other is in the advancing pose. It just makes sense for me and my need for order to put them together. If there was a setback to this uh, painting method, it was the details. The details on the models got drowned in the quick shade wash. This was fixed with a quick highlight, which is perhaps a step I would want to avoid when I want to do this army en masse. Perhaps I should have mixed dark tone down with a 50-50 mix of quick shade mixing medium. The pack base was much easier to complete, having a more unified look. I painted these first. Because for me, when painting, you'd want to complete a part of the force that you have the most confidence in doing before going in and attempting the more difficult parts of the army. I loved how it turned out, and in this instance, the dark tone did its job. I decided to combine the uh, command base with the single figure pikemen models. In many recommended pictures, the command sprue would be put together with this sprue of pikemen who are on the ready. I looked at the references and the combinations of pike and command, and this was very, very common. But instead, I went with the pairing of the single figure pikemen with the command figures as the command stand. The base for this figure was something I drew inspiration from when I saw the video from Leon T66 Wargaming's video on how he decided to combine a few bases for him to protect the pikes that were in attack position from getting broken off. Having a large brace imprint means the handling of the figure will be so much easier. I wanted the command base to be part of this scenic base and felt that it would be a shame if paired with the boring pike men who were standing posed at the ready. The painting of this regiment was quite deliberate and conscious. As I've already painted a few types of periods at this scale, every time I sat down to a new project, I had to decide what the sequence was going to be. I wrote down these in my painting guidebook so the next time I come back to painting these figures, I will know the best sequence to use to get the job done quickly. The hose, for example, on the figure was recommended to be white, but I left that black. Once the steps are established, you can start working on the speed and the painting strokes to get the figures done quickly. Now let's talk about the flags. I found out from an article from someone on the uh, Pike and Shot Facebook page that these flags are called ensigns. The ensigns are 100 standards or flags. Now when I can, I always try to add flags, banners, standards, and in this case, ensigns to a regiment I paint. It gives the whole regiment an extra level of attraction that I like. 
These look great on the table and even up close have a vibe about how everything turned out. I think, I think they turned out quite well. So here's the comparison of Warlord Games' 28mm and Epic Battle's 13.5 scales. Both use the same painting method of pure red spray, basic colours and a quick shade uh, dark tone finish. The big difference is that I dip the units in the dark tone dip and not use the bottle quick shade for the 28mm. They both look great to me and I love how it translated scale wise and I kept the look. The 28 figures are from the original Royalist infantry box that Warlord Games later consolidated into the English Civil War box. They both look similar. I think because of the scales, the Epic Battles figures look much darker. Okay, a tip for those painting 13.5 or 15mm figures, uh, go slow on the wash and if possible, choose a lighter tone for the colours that you intend to paint the figures. Because of how small they are, they will naturally turn out a little darker. Because of how the figures are based, both 28mm and the 13mm look, well, different enough. The size of the 28mm pretty much means that more detail comes through the finished model. They were also easier to dip into the quick shade dip for that faster finish. So yeah, here's another tip. When you first dip the 28mm figures into the quick shade dip, they come out with a gloss finish. I know painters who counteract this with the uh, spray of a uh, matte varnish to matte out the finish. However, as you can see, as the years pass, the gloss finish on the figures will lose its shine and end up quite matte. So don't be too concerned about the initial gloss finish. I know a lot of painters who are turned off from this dip method because of this. So let me just say, don't worry. They will all matte out after a while. I'm very happy with the way the regiment turned out with a minimal level of detail and a quick sequence of painting steps. These are ready to be replicated on another frame if I so choose to paint another one. I hope you like that. Another magazine, another free sprue, uh, another range I didn't think I'd have in my store, which I now have a small force for. Free sprues, man. That's the, that's the way to go. If you like um, videos like this, like, subscribe, as per usual. You can buy me a coffee. And don't forget to enjoy painting those figures.